Um, for the good, for the thoracic outlet syndromes. So thoracic outlet syndromes. Number one thing, though, it's always kind of looking to like uh, observation of the uh, the neck, lower neck regions. A lot of times, when you look in the clavicles, you should be able to see quite a bit of depression in the supraclavicular area right here. A lot of people with a congestion on the vasculature, lymphatic, it's going to be really kind of flat. And those are the patients that are usually prone to have more thoracic outlet syndrome. It could be also the palpation. When you palpate it, first thing is that um, palpate it on the supraclavicular regions and then palpate all these areas for the scalenes. And sometimes you will be able to palpate cervical uh, rib too. So make sure to kind of palpate and what's the structure that you're feeling. So observation, palpation is really a key um, to diagnose the thoracic outlet syndrome correctly. The first step test that you can do is the Addison's. Addison's, you want to feel the pulse. Feel the pulse. And you don't want to feel the pulse right up in here in a little bit anterior um, position. You want to actually feel it like a little bit, like 20, like 40 degree abduction. And then you want to stretch a little bit. So you want to bring it a little bit posterior. Don't bring it too far. If you do that, then you're stretching too much and you actually feel a lot of uh, decrease in the pulse. So right here, I feel the pulse. And what you want to do is ask them to put in a good posture. And then really important thing is the extension. And then look away. That will be a reverse Addison's. So for the Addison's itself, extension and look towards me. And when you do this, and then ask the patient to take a breath in and then hold it. What are you doing? The anterior, you're stretching anterior scaling, and anterior scaling is compressing and subgrabbing your artery, and then that will cause decreasing in the pulse. So that's good. Bring it back. So let's do the reverse Addison. So extension, and then look away. Take a deep breath in, and then hold it. You're stretching middle scaling, and the middle scaling is actually compressing onto the uh, subgrabbing artery. Go ahead, breathe out and then we'll feel it in a decrease in the pulse. Next test that you can do, again, relax, bring in, feel the pulse, bring in the posterior a little bit, and then hyperabduction test, it's also called Wright's test. So you're doing this and you're actually stretching the pec minor, and the pec minor is compressing it on the subcarabian artery, and you'll feel less pulse, and that will be a positive. Another test is called Eden's test. Eden's test is testing for the stability of the clavic clavicle, uh, clavicles. And also this could be a cervical rib. You will feel the pulse right here, and a little bit extended right here on the arm. And then what you want to do is you want to compress it down on the shoulder, on the clavicles, on all these areas. If there's a too much movement to it, well, it's cervical rib, then definitely it's going to compress in the subcarabian artery and decreasing the pulse. The last test is that usually we use to uh, diagnose the um, thoracic outlet is a wrist test. So you ask the patient to con close and open, close and open, and then really important things to ask the patient, that is tingling, and also you need to look into the discoloration. And a lot of times when patients do this, and it, you will be, be um, restricting the f blood flow, and it, the patient's um, the arm, like hands, will uh, have discoloration, either pale or bluish, and all that. So, and those are the tests for the thoracic outlet. Good.